pretty much uh, uh, all my life uh, as a researcher I've been working with this cell type and the natural killer cells. Um, my interest uh, were to know how NK cells uh, communicate and interact with other cells and uh, specifically I've been working for so many years in this uh, group of receptor uh, called inhibitory receptors. So approximately in the year 2006, uh, uh, in my lab, we started to be interested in another molecule, another inhibitory receptor called CE300A. In some way, because we got tired of working with CE94NKG2A, with CARE, and so my boss said, why we don't change and we look for other inhibitory receptor? Okay, what inhibitory receptor? And we started to work on, on CE300A. And that was uh, the time I started to be interested in this uh, uh, family of receptors. So the CE300 genes uh, are localized in the chromosome 17 in humans in chromosome 11. So as you can see here, humans have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, uh, seven members. Uh, uh, six of them are um, very close one to each other, uh, while another one is far away in the chromosome. Uh, and in the mouse, we have more uh, molecules. Uh, we are not going to talk today about mouse receptor, except a little bit about, uh, what is it, uh, this one, C300F. Um, this is a, a cartoon of uh, the human CD300 family of receptors. So uh, the one that uh, those receptors that are inhibitory or receptors that express iodine motif, inhibitory motif in the intracellular tail are CD300A and CD300F. So then we have other uh, that are uh, activating receptor are characterized by a short uh, cytoplasmic tail with usually not uh, known motif, a charged, a charged transmembrane residue that allows the association with adapter protein uh, that carry motifs like uh, um, uh, um, YXXM motif or a PA3 kinase binding motif, uh, also uh, um, another uh, that carry uh, items or activation motif. Um, C300F uh, is a molecule that Joan has worked a lot, and he has a very nice uh, uh, publication, very nice publication showing that this receptor, in addition of an inhibitor the inhibitory properties, has also the potential of uh, signal uh, um, induced activation. So um, I'm going to focus here a little bit about the C300A molecule. That is the one that we have worked more. Uh, in my lab, um, we know that it's expressed in cells, both of the uh, myeloid and lymphoid lineages, uh, in cells, uh, in all NK cells, and uh, neutrophils, in subsets of T cells, of B cells, and so on. Uh, this receptor, like the other C300 family members, are, uh, um, have an extracellular domain, uh, it's an IEDD-like extracellular domain, and the intracellular, they have three classical iodine and one no classical iodine. Uh, and until now, uh, so in our lab and in other labs, uh, so everybody has shown that this receptor functions exclusively as an inhibitory receptor. So, uh, it decreases in case cytotoxic activity, suppresses the effect of uh, eotaxin and um, other cytokine like IL-5 on uh, in human blood eosinophils. It also inhibits IgE-mediated granulation and certain publications in my lab have demonstrated that it inhibits TCR, BCR, and FC gamma receptor-mediated signals. So, uh, Obviously, uh, a very important point is what these receptors are recognizing in other cells. Um, to do that, in my lab, a, a postdoc, uh, uh, his name is Venkat, uh, um, he uh, generated a fusion protein, a CD300A fusion protein, and he used this protein OSA tool to uh, determine what cells express a putative ligand for this uh, receptor. 
So after, I don't know, one or more, uh, one year or more, so oh, he made so many experiments, never, uh, he never got any conclusive results. Uh, at the end, so uh, he went, um, maybe you recognize this kind of images, so these are peri peripheral blood mononuclear cell, PBMCs. You see cells that have a high forward uh, scatter and side scatter, mostly those are monocytes, here are lymphocytes, and these cells with low forward scatter are dead cells. And what he realized is that these cells with the medium forward scatter, and, uh, um, uh, they do not bind CD300A, which means that those cells do not express the ligand of CD300A. So monocytes binds a little bit uh, C300A, uh, um, uh, C300 I'm sorry, binds a little bit to monocyte, but importantly, what he found was that cells with low forward scatter, so dead cells, binds very nicely this protein, suggesting that this uh, protein uh, um, mm, is recognizing something that is expressed on dead cells. So here you can see uh, if we make this kind of staining, so we take PBNC, uh, uh, we have uh, in the X axis an X in 5 and 7 ADD in, in the Y axis, so we can distinguish three different uh, subsets according to, to how they are. So we have live cells uh, or early apoptotic cells or late apoptotic cells, meaning here that the plasma membrane is compromised. So he show again, so live cells do not bind the protein, and clearly what he show is that the uh, um, late apoptotic cells, but also the early apoptotic cells, uh, bind C300A. Another interesting result was that uh, if he took cells that are very evolutionary apart, like cells from chicken or even insect cells, so he also showed that C300A have here, so this is a uh, control protein, so C300A binds to these dead cells. So what he's telling us is that the ligand is something evolutionary conserved. And as you probably know, apoptotic cells or cells that are undergoing apoptosis, they are going to expose in the outer leaflet of the plasma membrane phosphatidylserine and also phosphatidylethanolamine, two phospholipids that in a live cell and resting cell usually is, uh, um, is not expressed on the outer leaf leaflet of the plasma membrane. So um, he went, um, determined, if c 300 the protein binds these lipids, so this is Biacore experiment. Um, what he put in the chip of the Biacore was liposomes with different uh, compositions. The upper one are PE liposomes, phosphatidyl ethanolamine containing liposomes. Here is phosphatidyl serine or PS containing li liposomes, and this is a control liposome or phosphatidyl choline. So, and he injected the protein. Or you can see CD300A binds very nicely P containing liposomes, also PS containing liposomes, but no uh, PC containing liposomes. Here you have the uh, a graphic representation of the resonant units. Um, uh, and our control protein, which is layer one, uh, or, so didn't show any significant binding. So we have here, a uh, receptor that is binding lipids that are exposed on dead cells or cells that are undergoing apoptosis. So uh, to further confirm this result, what he did was he tried to block the binding of this protein with this component, uh, MFGEA, which is a receptor of, for phosphatidylserine, or duramycin, which is a peptide that uh, binds to P. And as you can see here, so the binding, in this case, the binding to dead cells of CD300A is blocked by this PS ligand or by this P ligand. In addition, 
So uh, we collaborated with John Anderson at the NIH. Um, he generated a crystallographic model. So uh, he was able to, to determine in this model what residues are important for the contact of PS with C300A. So this is PS, and here you can see uh, with PE. So in data I'm not going to show you, we know that calcium is very important because calcium, if calcium is not present, so there is no any binding. So to confirm this, uh, that this model was okay, uh, um, so what Venka did was to mutate these residues that according to the model are important for the binding with PS and PE, and here you have the results. Clearly, this is uh, uh, binding to, to the mutants to that cell. He has all other type of binding. So when you mutate phenylalanine or, or, or these other residues, so we abolish the binding of this protein to that cells, confirming the validity of the uh, structural model. So we think that here still we see some binding because this Phenylalanine is not important, or at least according to the model, so it's not important for the binding to P while it's binding to PS, and the cells are expressing the dead cells, both PS and P. So uh, for us, it was also very important uh, to show this binding in another way because uh, we are using always the same tool. So we have a protein, and we have dead cells, or lipids on a plate or lipids on a biocore chip, but we wanted to show it in a different way. So for that, what we did was to generate reporter cell lines. Um, and um, in this case, so what, uh, uh, what we did was to uh, transfect a uh, cell line with a chimeric construct of the extracellular part was CE300A and the intracellular part uh, the C3 zeta chain. So the purpose here is when you have this reporter cell line that also is stably transfected with a reporter gene, in this case it was a beta gal. So when this cell line encounter the ligand, so uh, um, signals are going to be generated that go into the nucleus and activate the, uh, the transcription of the, of the reporter gene that this is what we measure. So, and here, what we show is that in this system, we found that P is very nicely recognized by C300A, while PS is not. Currently, we have no idea why this is happening. So, uh, we don't know if it's uh, because uh, uh, the way that PS uh, is exposed in this system is not the same way that is exposed on the dead cells. We don't know, but... Uh, at least we were able to confirm that uh, uh, P is a bona fide ligand for CD300A. Uh, very recently, uh, investigators from Japan, they have confirmed also our results. Um, so uh, another receptor that was very important or very interesting to us was uh, C300C. So as you can see here, if you compare C300A with C300C, so you have this long cytoplasmic tail with inhibitory motif, while C300C is, uh, does not have uh, uh, um, inhibitory motif, but associates with item or activating uh, motif uh, adapter, uh, containing adapter proteins. So, um, um, this is the extracellular uh, domain of uh, CE300A and uh, an alignment with uh, CE300T. This is the signal sequence. There is not a great homology, but as you can see here, so the homology between these two receptors is very high. So we were interested in studying this receptor as well. So um, a problem that uh, investigators uh, had until very recently is that there were not uh, uh, antibodies that are able to recognize uh, or to distinguish between C300A and C300C. So actually, 
what we did. So we, we, we uh, both on a commercially available antibody, and we demonstrated, or at least we think we demonstrated this, that this is specific uh, for CE300C. And here you have, uh, this is uh, 293 transfectants. This is a stable YDS transfectant, transfected with an empty vector, with CE300C containing vector or CE300A. And the TX45 antibody, as you can see here, only recognize cells that are transfected with C300C here, while other available antibodies recognize both C300A and C300C. So we have an antibody that we believe that is pretty much specific for C300C, and we went to the peripheral blood mononuclear cells, and we found that this a receptor is only expressed on monocytes. However, if you use an antibody that recognizes both A and C, you have subsets of T cells, subsets of B cells, all NK cells, all monocytes and granulocyte experts uh, uh, show uh, um, this antibody bind to these cells. Probably what they are recognizing is CE300A in these cells. So we have at least at the level of the cell surface expression, the CE300A and CE300C has different pattern of expression. So um, if you uh, generate uh, dendritic cells, both immature or LPS induced mature dendritic cells or macrophages, so still these cells uh, that uh, derive from monocyte, they express CE300C, or at least they bind this antibody. And in the dendritic cells, we have that they do not bind uh, that high compared with monocyte or with macrophages. So um, this is when you compare with other C300 member members. So here we have an immature dendritic cell. We have here the C300E or F um, immature dendritic cell. C300E disappear. Uh, C300F is maybe it goes down a little bit, and with uh, macrophages uh, we have a, a, a similar uh, picture. So uh, we think that we have an antibody that is specific for C300C, at least in the cells that we are studying. Um, uh, we determined to, 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 to perform more studies with these antibodies. So, uh, we showed that the, uh, the, this uh, receptor is rapidly down-regulated after LPS uh, or TLR4 um, ligands uh, um, and TLR5 ligand flagelling after two hours. Uh, we have preliminary data that this down-regulation is due a, at least partially to the action of metalloproteases, because if you inhibit metalloproteases, you prevent some of uh, that down-regulation. But later on, in the uh, around 24 hours, so the, the expression of the receptor increases. Um, so... Uh, does C300C binds the same pattern of lipids than C300A? Remember that the homology in that extracellular domain is very high, so the expectation, at least for us, is yes. So here you have uh, um, the binding of, uh, of the protein to dead Urcat cells. Um, this is... Uh, uh, and this is one histogram, so you have some binding there. But if you compare that with c 300 you can see that the affinity is less. So uh, this is the binding to, to, to dead Urcat cells and, uh, of c 300 a and this is the binding of c 300 c If you, instead to dead cells, what you have is pure lipids that are immobilized on a plate. This is the binding of c 300 a to immobilize PE, this is to PS, and here you have the, the, the binding of C300C to both PE and PS. And in fact, these results are pretty much the same if we use other uh, system, which is in, this is in, in Biacor, so both PS, uh, both C300A and C300C bind PS pretty much uh, the same way. However, if you go to PE, this is what we uh, find. So the C300A binds much, much better 
um, to P than to PS. And in fact, this is data I'm not going to show you when we use the reporter's line. We didn't find any functional recognition of CD300C expressing reporter cell lines to, of P. Also, this uh, Japanese group, they have shown that um, that, that, is, uh, uh, that is the case. So they recognize uh, C300C, recognize P, but uh, to a lower affinity. Um, another receptor that I just briefly touch, uh, because it was a project that uh, uh, was generated in my previous lab was uh, CD300F, and in this case, so what we have is mouse CD300F, and here we show again the same story, and is that these dead cells uh, bind a mouse CD300F fusion protein. So this is also the binding to uh, different lipids uh, uh, that are in immobilized on a plate. This is. Uh, uh, by a core studies, um, this is also a core immunoprecipitation study. So I'm pretty much what they show is that this receptor, this mouse receptor binds PS. However, very recently just appeared this uh, uh, paper in immunity saying that this uh, receptor, which is c 300 a binds to extracellular ceramide. We didn't test in our study ceramide, uh, but this uh, group has uh, tested PS and P and they didn't find any binding. So at this moment we have no idea uh, why these differences. Or what we know is that um, for data studies they use a, let's say, a long form of CD300F and we use a short form of CD300F where there is a alternative splicing in the neck region of the protein. We don't know if that is responsible for the difference of bind uh, in the binding or not. Um, and I think, I believe in my previous lab, they are studying this problem. So, but um, what is the functional relevance of the C300 molecule, uh, their interaction with uh, lipids, with phospholipids? So one thing that we decided to study first was uh, the phagocytosis of apoptotic cell by macrophages. This is a very important process uh, because uh, um, the proper removal of dead cells, uh, if that doesn't uh, occur, so disease like lupus or other kind of autoimmune disease may happen. And so we tested if uh, the interaction of uh, CE300A with uh, these lipids in apoptotic cell affect in some way the rate of uh, phagocytosis by macrophages. So we generated macrophages, they are c 300 a positive. And what we observe is that uh, if you add, in, this is a, mm, here is a flow cytometry base assay, uh, phagocytosis assay. So what we do is we have macrophages and we add uh, uh, apoptotic thymocytes that are labeled with uh, a dye, in this case PKH67 and then you wash, uh, uh, harvest your cell, you wash and remove all the cells that are not internalized, no phagocytosis, and you go to the flow cytometer and you determine the rate of phagocytosis. So if we put the protein, c 300 protein into the, the, the assay, so what we see is that there is an increase in the rate of phagocytosis, probably, probably, although I'm not very sure about that, uh, meaning that uh, um, this receptor in some way slow down the rate of phagocytosis. This is one example, and this is the, 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 all the experiment we have performed in the lab. Um, also, if we transfect uh, these uh, cells, uh, L929 cells with C300A, we can see that the cells expressing CD300A has a lower rate of uh, uh, phagocytosis of apoptotic cells. Um, I'm not sure, honestly, that this is the more important thing that CD300A is doing. And we have already some results that, this, that are telling us that what CD300A is doing related to the phagocytosis of dead cells by macrophages is inhibiting the pro-inflammatory response that may happen or that actually happen when macrophages uh, um, 
uh, uh, phagocytose dead cells. Um, this is uh, some results that we have. We are working a little bit more on that, but I think that's honestly the, the, the more important story is that and not the decreasing in the rate of, uh, the decrease in the rate of phagocytosis. In addition to um, macrophages, we also studied the, uh, what is the role of this receptor on BCR-mediated signal, because we found that uh, memory B cells uh, express CD300A, not all of them, but subsets of them. So if we um, take a human B cells, uh, we make a calcium mobilization assay, so cross-linking CD300A with an antibody. So we always have, uh, uh, so what we, you have a calcium flux. Please look at the black line when you cross-link the BCR with the B cell receptor with, uh, with uh, antibodies. But if you co-cross-link with an anti-CD300 antibody, what you have is a decrease in that calcium flux, indicating and showing that this uh, receptor is an inhibitory receptor. Here, the decrease is not very, it's not, it's just a little, uh, let's say. But uh, mm, we believe it's because uh, if in the whole human B cells from peripheral blood, only approximately, uh, depending on the donor, 10, 15 percent of the cells are expressing CD300A. That's why we don't see a, a big decrease in the calcium flux. If we Take these chicken cells and we express CD300A, human CD300A, we can see a more decent uh, uh, um, calcium flux block when we co cross link CD300A and the B cell receptor. Um, downstream calcium, so what happened uh, is uh, the translocation to the nucleus of this transcription factor, the MFAT that we uh, using reporter cell lines, so we can see that CD300A very nicely inhibit the translocation of the transcription factor to the nucleus. So um, I'm very proud, honestly, of this experiment. Um, the reason is and that first um, knocking down uh, CD300A or other cell surface receptor on primary human B cells is not an easy task, and our collaborator at the NIH, they did it very nicely. So what they did is they took primary B cells, they transfected them with a non-targeted siRNA or with a CD300A uh, um, siRNA, so, um, well, and then stimulate the cells uh, throughout the BCR with IgG plus A plus M or only anti-IgM or anti-IgG. But the results, the important thing is that you see here, in the absence of antibodies, just solid that we have proliferation, so we induce proliferation of these cells. Cells that are transfected with uh, c 300 ASI RNA, they are proliferating more than the cells that are transfected with a non-target SI RNA. Confirming this is uh, all the results that we have, confirming that this receptor, in fact, is an inhibitory receptor. Um, and here, in these cultures, if you go, many cells are dead, so they are exposing PS and they are exposing P, but also many cells are activated. Um, B cells and T cells uh, that are activated, people have shown that are able to express PS on the cell surface without being apoptotic. So maybe this receptor, we don't know this is something we would like to study, so when some cells get activated, so it's, uh, they, they are going to expose those uh, lipids. Um, C300 molecules, including C300A, may recognize these activated cells. So uh, this is not from my lab. This is from Akira Sibuya lab. He published uh, last year uh, a paper with the knockout of this receptor. And as you can see here, but maybe we should only focus here. So the, the results clearly indicate that CD300A inhibits LPS induced cytokine secretion from mast cells. So you have, this is in, in, in the white bar, the wild type mouse, and the CD300A knockout mice are in the black bar. So if you stimulate with LPS, the knockout 
they produce more interferon. Oh, no, I'm sorry, TNF alpha, IL 13, and MCP1, while the wild type produce less, so indicating that there is a uh, CD300 that is an inhibitory receptor. Or if in the wild type you block with this, remember this compound or this protein that is a receptor for PS, so you block the interaction of CD300A with PS, so these cells produce also more cytokines. So we don't think that there are, uh, or there is no doubt that this receptor is an inhibitory receptor. So what happened with CD300C? Um, until now, we have made only an uh, experiment with antibodies. And if you uh, cross-link uh, um, CD300C that is expressed on, 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 on monocytes, so you, you are able to generate a calcium flux. So it's indicating that this is uh, an activating receptor. And also, uh, in those monocytes, the uh, expression of CD80C, a co-stimulatory molecule monocytes, is increased when you compare with non-stimulated monocytes or when you just solely put on the plate because uh, um, on the plate an isotype control. And uh, also, if you measure cytokines, what we see is that uh, uh, when we stimulate CD300C, by cross-linking with this TX45 antibody, those cells produce most, more TNF-alpha and ILA. Um, at the same time, also, it's a co-stimulatory receptor uh, um, with uh, uh, LPS. Um, and the interesting thing is that you have an increase in these pro-inflammatory cytokines, ILA, 6, IL-1, beta, and TNF-alpha. Um, at least in our hands, this anti-inflammatory cytokine that is interleukin 10 is not increased after the cross-linking of CD300C. So maybe it could be a very interesting molecule to study in situations of chronic inflammation. Or acute, obviously. So um, CD300F, uh, like CD300A, so we study also what is the role of uh, in the phagocytosis of apoptotic cells. This is mouse, uh, CD300F. Uh, we also uh, uh, show that this uh, uh, C300 a promotes the phagocytosis of that cell. So results from the, my former laboratory, so they are showing that uh, this increase in the phagocytosis, or this C300F mediated phagocytosis is PI3 kinase uh, dependent. Um, so, uh, in this figure, you can see how complex, especially in certain molecules like CD300F, is uh, the, the mechanism of uh, uh, the, the signal mediated through this receptor. And in my lab, uh, Karen, the technician, decided to study uh, the signaling mediated through uh, CD300A. So the first thing, although this was uh, totally expected, um, I think somebody published it before. So is that the four tyrosines in the intracellular tail, so those tyrosines that form are part of the inhibitory motif. If you mutate those tyrosines for fenilalanine, so she abolishes the inhibitory effect of CD300A. So you see there is here an inhibition of the calcium flux. There is no here. This is the same measuring the fat translocation to the nucleus. She made more experiments. She, for example, found that this tyrosine is really, really important for the uh, inhibitory uh, function of this receptor. Um, so this is maybe a simplified cartoon of how an inhibitory receptor works. So this is not for CD300A, but this is for a, probably a better study kind of inhibitory receptor, KIR, that is expressed in NK cells. When they encounter their ligand expressed on the target cells, the ITIN motif, the inhibitory motif, those tyrosines become phosphorylated. So those phosphorylated tyrosines then are like the docking sites of phosphatase that come and bind to them. Phosphatase, like uh, SHP1 or other phosphatase, so when they bind, they get activated, and then they block activation signal. This process now is more complex, but I, I, I think that that's okay right now. So until now, what we knew is that we have, uh, related to C300A, is that this 
this is the intracellular tail of the molecule. We have all those uh, uh, phosphatases, SHP1, 2 SHIP in the cytoplasm. Some people have shown that once this uh, intracellular tail gets phosphorylated, it's able of binding these three kind of phosphatases. Then people say, okay, these phosphatases are responsible for the inhibitory signal. So Karen decide that to test if that was true or not. Um, it seems that it's not, or at least in our hands. So uh, what she did was first, uh, uh, she uh, mm, generate uh, mm, JURCAT T cells that express CE300A wild type or CE300A that are, is mutated in the four tyrosines, the four F. Uh, um, this is JURCAT, uh, I'm sorry, JURCAT that express a chimeric molecule. The extracellular part is KIR and the intracellular part is the intracellular, uh, is the intracellular tail of CE300A wild type of four F. And he put those cells in contact with other cells that express the ligand of the key, of the extracellular part of the chimeric molecule that she made. So first, you can see that there is a phosphorylation uh, when both cells are in contact, the one expressing uh, uh, KIR C300 equal type with cells that express the ligand for KIR, while there is no phosphorylation when the cells, they are incubated with cells that do not express the ligand, and there is no phosphorylation at all when the cells are uh, um, expressing the chimeric receptor CE300A, uh, um, KIR CE300A4F. So I, here, uh, what he's telling you is just solely the uh, interaction of the ligand with the uh, receptor induced the phosphorylation of the intracellular tail. And she showed here that both SHP1 and SHP2 phosphatases are able to bind. Uh, this is positive control. Um, furthermore, what she used was uh, cells that are knockout for SHP1, cells that are knockout for SHP2, and cells that are knockout for SHIP. And what she observed is that according to this result, it seems that only SHP1 is the phosphatase that is responsible for the inhibitory signal, but no SHP2 or SHIP. And this is the MFAT translocation uh, assay, so uh, we have pretty much the, the same result. So it's telling us that only SHP1 is the uh, phosphatase responsible for this. Um, we went to the JURCAT system, and what she did was knock down SHP1, knock down SHP2. This is the result of the knockdown of these two phosphatases. Um, we didn't knock down SHIP because JURCAT cells do not express SHIP. This is the results from the Western blot. But the important thing is here. So you only have an inhibitory effect throughout SHP1, but not throughout SHP2. So what we propose now is the following model. So you have uh, the intracellular uh, CD300A. This is the intracellular tail with all the phosphatases and maybe other uh, type of proteins, other phosphatases, uh, skinases, whatever you want to say. So and what we are pretty sure is that the inhibitory signal is mediated throughout SHP1 when binds the phosphorylated uh, tail of C300A. However, we do not know what is doing this. So we think that there is some competition, uh, um, but we don't know what kind of signal is transmitting SHP2 bound or SHIP bound to C300A. And in fact, we have even evidences that there is a third uh, or fourth uh, component that uh, is involved in the C300 immediated signal, although we don't know what component is this one. So, uh, what is the clinical relevance of the C300 molecules? In mouse, there are uh, a couple of uh, papers. Uh, um, some of them are, um, have been published by a group in Israel, and these, uh, I think, three 
uh, papers. And what they made was uh, by a specific antibodies targeting both CD300A and another molecule, in this case CCR3, or for example, KIT or uh, um, IgE, and using this by a specific antibody. So they were able uh, to reverse uh, um, airway inflammation that happened during uh, a model of asthma that they use. Um, very importantly, I think, is the remodeling, the tissue remodeling that is happening in those mice. Uh, I think this is a very, very important data. Um, also, they, 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 with this kind of antibody, they are able to abrogate allergic reactions and uh, keep signaling um, in, in another model. So, with, clearly, with this result, uh, this uh, investigator uh, demonstrated that uh, targeting this uh, receptor uh, may have uh, um, important in the therapy of certain diseases like uh, during allergy or asthma. So um, the paper I showed you before by uh, Shibuya et al. So uh, mm, they showed that the apoptotic cells suppress the mast cell inflammatory responses via the CD300A inhibitory receptor. Related to CD300B, the knockout of this uh, animal um, so uh, mm, ameliorates uh, the, a, a model of uh, uh, ischemia reperfusion injury in, in the kidney. Um, another group, uh, what well, I think is the same group, they have shown that a soluble form of this receptor is, uh, it, it has a role amplifying LPS-induced uh, sepsis. Um, Related to CD300F, the knockout uh, of CD300F has a higher uh, incidence of uh, uh, the mouse model of multiple sclerosis. So, uh, confirming that at least in that model, CD300F is a negative regulator. Um, this is a paper, uh, a paper that actually uh, was made here because uh, Joan is the, the senior author of this manuscript. So uh, they have shown that the, the C300F, in, uh, when it's overexpressed in a model of, uh, uh, of acute brain injury in rats, has a neuroprotective um, uh, role. Um, this is the one I showed you before, that uh, uh, C300F negatively regulates the muscle activation and allergy responses. Uh, in humans, so we know that um, it was described that, that the SNP uh, that happened in CE300A is associated with, uh, uh, mm, or is linked to psoriasis susceptibility. I will show you some results from my lab related to that. There are some data uh, that implicate CE300F along with other genes <laughs> in the um, etiology of uh, Alzheimer's diseases. Uh, we showed that C300 uh, in my lab, uh, Sriram, uh, showed that this uh, molecule is able to, is a marker for polyfunctional Th1 cells um, that are characterized by uh, the upregulation of a specific transcription factor called EOMES. Um, uh, also, other group, I think this is from Harvard, so they have used uh, CD300A as a blood-based biomarker to differentiate uh, ulcerative colitis from Crohn's and other uh, non-inflammatory diarrhea. Um, in, in a very nice, I think it's a very nice paper. So um, uh, a group I think is from Belgium. So they describe new markers for the detection of minimal residual disease in acute lymphoblastic leukemia, and one of those new markers is uh, CD300A. So in my lab, we have shown that uh, CD300A, like I told you, is expressed on B-cell modulated BCR mediated signal, and the expression of uh, uh, this receptor on HIV-infected patients is completely deregulated. And in fact, this is uh, the data. So we have here healthy donors. We have HIV-infected uh, patients that are under treatment with undetectable viremia or HIV viremic uh, uh, people, and you can see that the expression of the, perc uh, the percentage of C300A expressing B cells is decreased. 
uh, in HIV infected patients, both in the C21 negative and C21 positive cells. Um, um, when you look at the, oh, well, this is an example. This is, for example, um, a uh, healthy donor uh, in the egg axis, you have CD21, CD318 in the Y axis. So this is the aviremic, or uh, maybe this is not the correct term, uh, HIV undetectable. And this is the viremic individual, so you see clearly that there is a decrease in the expression of CD300A when you compare the HIV-infected patients versus the, the healthy donor. Uh, this is when we look at the intensity of the fluorescence. It's not only a, a, a decrease in the, in the um, percentage of uh, positive cells, but also in the amount of uh, protein expressed on the cell surface per cell. And uh, we think that uh, at least this, is, this, this, this uh, study was uh, made in collaboration with Susan Moy from the laboratory of uh, Anthony Fauci. And uh, she thinks she's a person that knows a lot about B cells and, and HIV, that uh, this um, uh, deregulation of the expression of CD300A on, on, on patients uh, that are infected with HIV may be very relevant to, to the um, hyper uh, B cells in, in this individual are, are, are um, hyperactivated. So she thinks that maybe, I'm going to put the maybe, the, the decrease in the CD300A expression could be an explanation. Interestingly, when she knocks down uh, the result I showed you before uh, in the proliferation, so you knock down CD300A, the, the, the proliferation increases. However, when she knocks down other inhibitory receptors like LER1 or CD22 or other that these cells are expressing, she never found any effect. So at least in healthy donor, because she did that on healthy donor, uh, CD300A has a very important role in the, in the uh, um, BCR-mediated acti BCR activation. So and this is also from the paper of Shibuya. Uh, what uh, in a model that uh, um, uh, a sepsis model, uh, so what, uh, um, so if CD300A is knocked down or block, uh, or there is a blockage uh, because he injected uh, uh, um, the antibody, anti CD300A, those mice survive much better, and this is due because uh, uh, those uh, mast cells are going to produce more chemokines that are going to recruit neutrophils that are going to uh, um, control the, the infection, the sepsis. And this is also the same story with the blocking the interaction of CD300A with PS uh, uh, when you injected this uh, um, molecule that binds PS uh, or with the CD300A knockout. So, um, and finally, I want to show you this uh, related to the psoriasis I told you before. So, um, this SNP is here, uh, the SNP that has been associated with uh, the development of psoriasis. And in my lab, uh, Venka decided to make uh, um, a protein with this uh, mutation or this SNP, and you compare this one with this one, you can see that there is less binding to uh, um, dead cells. This is the, the results uh, that, uh, of all the experiment. When he made a Biacore experiment, putting uh, liposomes on a chip, uh, he found pretty much the same results. The binding to PS almost is lost. This is also to pure lipids immo immobilized on a plate. And the binding to P is, is clearly down-regulated. So, um, this doesn't mean that uh, uh, CD300 is, uh, is a molecule that has a very important role in, in psoriasis. We have no idea. The only thing that we are putting there is at least people that have this SNP, their CD300 molecule binds less to, 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 to their ligands. Um, so um, I think I'm finishing here. Uh, I'm going to pass this part because it's not mine. But uh, um, uh, because we have been centered more in what is uh, CD300A in the lab, so the way that we visualize that this is happening is so imagine that what we have is 
the, the immune system is in resting conditions or, not, or naive, whatever uh, uh, you want to call it. So um, if suddenly, because uh, uh, there is a stimulation, uh, a factor uh, that induces uh, activation of the immune system, it could be because of antigen recognition, because there is an inflammatory milieu, or there is oncogenic transformation, so so then when we have an encounter, uh, an activated immune system, which is the function of this is to uh, uh, to, to eliminate the the insult that uh, cause the, the the activation. So and uses different uh, system like the production of pro-inflammatory cytokines, cytotoxicity, etc. So, but what is very important is that after the immune system perform its role, so it has to be shut down because if not, it can cause disease, autoimmune disease or inflammatory inflammation mediated disease. So one of the things that has to be done is the removal of activated cells or these cells that have been activated. So uh, these cells usually um, become apoptotic and they have to be uh, phagocytosed or removed. Um, obviously, macrophages are uh, and other cell types, so other professional phagocytes are going to remove those cells. Another way to shut down the immune system is, for example, throughout uh, NK cell mediated cytotoxicity because uh, um, mm, activated cells are able to express or indeed express. Uh, ligands uh, for activating receptor on uh, on human NK cells. And the way that we see CE300A, or this is the way, no, we see it, the way that we are studying CE300A. One is uh, an inhibitory function, so uh, because it's important not to overactivate the immune system, but at the same time, we think that. Uh, in the, during the shutdown phase, when there is a phagocytosis of apoptotic cells and so on, is going to probably, and we have already some data, create an anti-inflammatory environment to avoid the, 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 the inflammation-mediated uh, uh, pathology. So here I finish. Um, I want to express my thanks especially to, to Venkat, uh, a postdoc that I have in the lab. He's uh, still working in Bethesda, um, it works a lot. Uh, it's, it's so passionate about what he does. Um, all of you that are here, especially young people, I recommend you that this is uh, doing research is something uh, that's going to provide you big, big satisfaction and it's going to make you very happy when you find uh, good results. So. Um, so, Animo is a adelante. So, uh, Karen De Bell so was the uh, technician. She was uh, amazing uh, um, performing her project, but at the same time running the lab. It's uh, so good. Oh, it was so good. <laughs> I didn't have to take care of, you know, uh, pay slips, uh, <laughs> orders, and all those kind of things. I think those times were better. Uh, John Mariano was a, a, a very good student in my lab. I didn't present a lot of uh, results uh, from him. Um, he's now in, in his first year of the medical school. Very, very good student, amazing. Joanna Okinzu, uh, she was a fellow of the National Cancer Institute. Uh, Ale Ola, or Alexandra, so she was just only in my lab for a few months. We had some money we could uh, pay her for a few months, but she published the paper, come on. So it was only three months. Millie is another student. Next year she's, she's going to, to the medical school. Then from my former lab, Rudy, that is also in the medical school, and Song and Lin Ji, um, that have been working a lot in the CD300F uh, and are still working. Rudy was involved in the B cells and CD300A. Um, John, my former advisor, uh, um, from the laboratory of Tony Fauci, Susan Moir, and Lela Cardava, uh, I think their data were amazing uh, uh, for us to publish the plot that we published about the, the B cells and C300. Um, from the Cordoba in Sevilla, my former ad PhD advisor, Jose Peña from Sevilla, this new friends, uh, Manuel Leal and Sara Ferrando Martinez has been very helpful. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Um, if you have some question, I'll be delighted to answer it. 